Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to our panel discussion on World Youth Skills Day. Today, we have two esteemed experts joining us to share their insights and experiences in the work world and in the entrepreneurship journey as well. But first, let me talk about what World Youth Skills Day is about. So it's pretty much about um, equipping young um, adults or students into the workspace or entrepreneurship or whatever venture they decide to go um, the path of whether it's apprenticeship or it's actually like going into um, maybe a placement after uni how do they equip themselves to stay as um, productive as possible but also you know build a network and be as equipped as they can as well but the importance of this is um, it's around skills development, whether that's like social um, skills, work skills, team development skills as well. But before I just like um, continue on to more about that, let's begin by introducing our experts. So could you guys briefly ex introduce yourself separately and tell me um, what you guys do and any like side hustles that you work on? Like we can start with Tracy. Um, hi, I'm Tracy, and I work as a 3D designer. Um, I currently don't do any side hustles, but I used to do a lot of um, animations. Uh, sometimes, like, uh, I do hair as, as a freelancer, or I do just, like, creative things, whether it's marketing-related or it's um, graphic-related side hustles. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Leon, how about yourself? Hi, my name is Leon. Um, I work as a legal estate advisor, so I advise people about their properties and about making wills and, and things, you know, like legal documents, you know, kind of thing. Um, I used to do sort of a business myself where I used to sort of buy and sell different items. So I buy things at a reduced price and mm -hmm. I like to send them on for more. And that's me. I love that. Thank you, guys. Um, yeah, that's a fantastic intro. Thank you so much. So, do you guys do you guys enjoy what you do? Yeah. Yes, very much so. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I love that. I love that for you guys. Um, so I do have some questions regarding like um different skills that you can like work on as well, but these are more like around skills development. So, like since joining the work for workforce, do you guys feel like your communication? skills have changed uh personally i would say yes because my job is very demanding in terms of time frame mm -hmm. so it's really important that you like clearly and concisely communicate to your team members what needs to be done and when or else it just creates a snowball effect of just yeah bad things so in terms of being more specific and clear in my speech that's how my workplace has helped Okay, great. How about yourself, Leanne? Yeah, so it's again very similar to Tracy. It's like um, just you know when you've like got a job and that like, you've got a career you're involved yeah. in, you sort of mature in that way. Mm -hmm. Um, that you sort of in a way like sort of you need to be dependent. You need to work as a team, and mm -hmm. if one person doesn't do what they're expected to do, another person can't do because it all links into each other. So I feel like since I've joined the workforce. I feel like since I've been working on a team, you know, it's, it's helped my personal development and my personal growth as well. Mm -hmm. So it helps me work on my own initiative, but I'm also able to work in a team, which is just as important as working on your own. Yeah. I think that's really good. Uh, how long have you guys been in the workforce so far? Uh, I've been here for almost nine, ten months. Yeah, so me, it's just, just over a year. Over a year. So you, you're quite fresh in, like, in in terms of like working in like workspaces and everything but you've also learned like the emotional intelligence behind working in a workspace how you have to be like self-aware but also know how to communicate things across to anyone if you need something specifically as well and get things done on time yeah that's right yeah yeah okay that's i love that so for somebody who's probably still in uni what are some like um what would you tell them to work on in terms of like developing their leadership skills I would say 
in terms of leadership skills, I would highly recommend that they, depending on their career, obviously, but I would highly re recommend that they do something, even if it's volunteer, something that involves them working mm -hmm. in a team. Okay. Uh, because if you get the chance to work in a team, then you might get the chance to suggest something and lead something within the team, whether it's a small thing, just something interactive that has you talking to other people in a team setting. Um, so yeah, something that involves communicating with other people. Yeah. Okay. How about yourself, Leon? So I would say anything that sort of boosts your sort of CV or curriculum vitae, you know, yeah. um, something that can when you leave uni you can show show a workforce what potential you can bring to that company because obviously every single person's got their own skill and yeah. it's having the self confidence and having the self-belief to realize that you have a skill and the thing is the company needs you because you know you have a skill that yeah. somebody else in that workforce will not have That's so you true. can bring that skill but it's it's being able to exhibit and show what you what you possess what skills you possess mm -hmm. and show and demonstrate it in a way in a confident way and bring mm -hmm. that to it like a company so you know it's gain gain experience get again any experience you can do you know whether it's a good experience or a bad experience experience under the belt experience and yeah. sort of you can use that to help you in your future career yeah i agree i think especially in this day it's that bit's like education more than anything else because you can you can get a hands-on experience and then you can apply that to different areas so you can get like a lot of transferable skills into different industries if you ever decide to like you know what I don't really like this anymore I'm going to go into a different industry as well yeah mm. okay awesome um okay what about in terms of like time management and organization skills how have you guys got into a place that you're really good at doing it or do you still feel like it's something that you're still working on I'll be very honest yeah <laughs> Time management is um it's it's not something that I, you know I've grasped quite easily, but yeah. it's definitely something I need to work on. Though it has improved with the job, I think sometimes the longer you stay at the job, the better you get at it. Because um, even within the first few months of working, the mm -hmm. time constraints of different projects are different. Some projects I didn't get my one of my first like really time restricted projects until a few months in, where they were like, "Oh, we need this tomorrow," and mm -hmm you know you kind of have to figure something out really last minute and it tests you so uh, yeah it's it's okay. kind of one of those things that you learn across the as you go really okay so you it sounds like you learn how to pivot <laughs> yes <laughs> pivot again. Yeah. yeah and I have to prioritize yeah. something more than something else because you can never get everything done on time and exactly you do like oh yeah I have to finish this and doing like another high priority project at the same time as exactly. well okay so I know like you work in the creative industry and um Leon you work in more of like the legal side of industry as well but from mm. what you've done so far in terms of like building your skills on the creative side how did you how did you guys get to a place where you're developing your creative skills and how have those helped you in the workspace as well um, I am really big on self-learning. So mm -hmm. a lot of my skills were developed via um, like videos, yeah. um, a few books and um, knowing other people that like the things that I like. So I like 3D. So mm -hmm. I know other people like 3D, but the geeky kind of people. So I can always yeah. get information from them rather than me reading it because they know it. Yeah. Um, so that's another way I learned. Okay, that's so, really good. Yeah. So mostly YouTube University then. Pretty much, YouTube University. That's the best university. But yeah. But how about yourself, Leon? Yeah, so for me, I would like watch, funny enough, sounds a bit nerdy, but I would like watch sort of documentaries. Oh, okay. um, we're going to documentary. Um, yeah, so um, what do you mean like, for, for legal stuff or for like, creative stuff? Just creative in general, like what kind of documentaries? Because usually I think of like three large documentaries, like scary ones. I'm not sure if those are creative. Yeah, something like <laughs> something like uh, sorry, maybe something a bit like mind log boggling or something oh, okay. a bit, yeah, a bit like out, gosh. something out there. Yeah, um, yeah. Something that's gonna make your brain think, you know, it's gonna yeah, make you yeah. 
the word sort of quite intricate that intricacy for the brain mm. yeah um, that really does um trigger that creative side. Obviously, you've got logical side of the brain you've got creative science and that triggers the creative side of the brain you know mm-hmm. um of course you know that's that's kind of my way of doing things i'm very much a visual learner so i like to visualize things and i have to look at something if someone tells me something i'm not very good at sometimes you know that someone yeah. can tell me something but i need to be able to visualize it if i can visualize it then i'm better than okay. someone just telling me auditory yeah. you know Okay, so you're more like a visual learner than you are a uh, like auditory, auditory. Yeah, oh. I really struggle with something. Someone asks me a question, I'm like, yeah. okay, can you say that again? <laughs> you know. Yeah. So uh, it sounds different. like it sounds like maybe you, like once you're you're in uni and you're learning, you're growing as an individual. You're also kind of like catered to your own way of learning as well, because maybe you didn't care that for you to learn how, especially in law. I think it's mostly reading, isn't it? It's not. You don't it really is, yeah. think, like visualization, or unless you've got like photography, thick memory where you just look at the page. Yeah, and... <laughs> I'm quite good at that. I'm not sure it's quite photographic, but I do yeah. remember stuff. Like... <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I wouldn't go quite there. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I really love that. Um, so is there anything else in terms of like teamwork and collaboration in like whether that's in uni or in college that you've learned and you're like, you know what? I really, 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 really do love this. Um, that just kind of helped you that you just maybe didn't think it was a skill, but it's it's actually helped you to collaborate and build those team working skills. Okay, so you're asking, is there anything, is there a skill that we've learned that helped with teamwork and collaboration? Yeah. Is that the question? That is um, the question. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. <laughs> okay. I think maybe it sounds like a random one for me, that person from yeah. personal screen. Mm-hmm. Like um as is that is to do ethics. Yeah. Uh, okay. I think that funnily enough, understanding like doing ethics and understanding how different people like sort of see things and how people sort of feel, that mm-hmm. sort of helps a little bit in respect of you know. Okay, that's good. Um, as for me, because I'm really big on solo learning, mm-hmm. so teamwork is not something that came naturally to me. So what I did was I found someone with similar interests to my passion, 3D, and I used them to learn teamworking skills. So I'd like make plans and I'd be like, oh, let's say we create a project together and we have to work yeah. on it together. And mm-hmm. that's how I built it. Because naturally, working in a team wasn't natural for me. At uni, we didn't do a lot of mm-hmm. the, real life team working kind of things, so I kind of had to source that out myself. Okay. Um, so I guess finding kind of real life scenarios to help with team yeah. building skills, you know, yeah, a friend or anyone to help. Okay, I like that. I think it sounds like there's a lot of like proactive learning, like you proactively went out there and just like filled in the skills gap by yourself as well but does that mean that maybe you didn't feel like the uni didn't the unis you went to not shit to any unis but the uni you went to <laughs> didn't really equip that inter entrepreneurship side yeah. Of yeah and the creative side as well do you think there could have been like programs that would have been like more proactive to like kind of help you guys get ready for the workplace or do you feel like it's okay this was good for us to just kind of go into it I know it's Gen Z you guys tend tend to be more quick on everything than other generations as well and that's something that I've noticed like it's, it's going to happen as you get older you're going to be a lot slower and mm-hmm. younger is going to be quick as well so do you feel like maybe with that like the schools didn't really like have your best interest in terms of like honing those skills for the work workspace. I think there's always sort of if I use the right words for room for improvement. Um, I think they could do a much more sort of wholehearted effort mm-hmm. in trying to yeah. cater for that creative yeah. side. Okay. There's all seems to be that very logical, but you know the creative side sort of like runs out the window if you will mm. so i think they could do more to try and boost that creative energy you know yeah yeah, yeah i agree i don't really think that nice. at least for me my uni experience 
a lot of the skills I have are not from uni. Yeah. Um, and I honestly would say they didn't do much. Oh. So I think that they need to do better in terms of real life skills. I think it's kind of like, even if you take it back to like secondary school, there's mm -hmm. things that we've learned that we haven't applied in the real world. I think mm -hmm. uni is just that on a bigger scale. Um, there's real life skill that we've only learned. I think it's the same for both of us. We've only learned in actual work. In adulthood, yeah. Um, but okay. in uni, they say we're preparing you, but we yeah. get prepared for something that, that for situations that don't exist, if that makes sense. But we, yeah. don't, we don't apply it in real life. But they could definitely do better in almost every aspect. Yeah, no, I totally agree. Like I felt the same as well. So, but I thought maybe it would, it would have changed with like the younger generation because then they would have learned from like the other generation as well. Especially like with I think maybe if they're getting to like a hundred and hundreds of students, maybe it might become a little bit less catered to, or you might feel like, oh, you know what, maybe this isn't relevant to me at all. And mm -hmm. especially with the collaboration part as well, I guess you kind of have to enjoy what you're doing for you to want to be part of it as well. Is that true? That's true. Yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Um, so another question I've got um on my screen is that, okay, so with like younger people these days, they tend to be very expressive, which I love. And however, this seems to be maybe a challenge in resilience according to research what is your opinion on this guys I really I want to know like what you think as Gen Z generation do you feel like that is true or do you feel like no it's not. okay so just to clarify you're asking if the Gen Z generation is more less resilient, resilient or less resilient in the workplace yes um, I think that's kind of true now not for every Gen Z. Yeah. A lot of us not want to like take nonsense at work in comparison to the older generation. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, the older generation suffer when they're at work and they don't want to say no to their bosses because of like, you know, they're afraid to affect it. Whereas the younger generation is starting to take less and less of that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. they're starting to realize the truth, which is as much as, you know, our bosses, you know, we, mm -hmm. you know, we work for them whether they're employee, they also yeah. work for us. Because, you know, you know, they need to work for us as much as we work for them. They asked us, you know, for my workplace, they yes, came to me, yeah. they read my skills. So mm -hmm. they need to also make sure I'm happy at the workplace or else I end up going somewhere else. So we have that kind of mentality. Um, mm -hmm. So they have less resilience, I think, these days. What would you say? Yeah, I would say less, definitely less. Um, just people don't like put up with saying things they had to in the past yeah. uh, I'm not sure I'm not saying nowadays like people got more backbone but, <laughs> but yeah. they, I don't think but it's just, well yeah yeah it's just that you know you sort of come to that realization that you don't have to suffer yeah you know yeah, yeah. suffer <laughs> but, the word suffer. but they have to go through the same things you know yeah. That the generation beforehand did, did yeah. have to go through. That's true, yeah. Um, no, I can agree with that. I really do. Because I think it's it's very, like, um, I guess a lot of self-love for you to actually stand up and, and say, do you know what? This is not good yeah. for my health. I'm going to leave as well. But I also think it's a two-way street between, like, the workspace you work at and also, like, yourself as well. So, yeah, exactly. like, kudos to you guys. Um, I don't know if boomers would love this, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was good because you got you got apps like um you know fishbowl yeah where you have people that go in there and you can rate companies and see what people are saying so it's kind of like reviews yeah. for companies so they're going to want good reviews from them mm -hmm. so they have to treat you well um yeah. which helps you mm -hmm. need more apps like that, um <laughs> to yeah. help to help but yeah oh, you pay, you pay. Good. yeah so that's the kind of stuff in america yeah <laughs> I like that because our app does that as well. It's kind of like, um, so like when you're connected with like a local expect as well, like you actually have to write them and think, oh, okay, like did this person do the job the way I wanted it to be done? Was it up to quality as well? And also like you can also develop like your own skills at the same, at the same time. So if you're not mm -hmm. like a creative person and you're like, oh, I want to get into creative, you can start something creative, whether that's like learning how to like sue or I don't know if creative, like suing is creative, but Along some for some people they think it is to be honest maybe it's like painting you want to start painting class or do you know like this thing that's been going on on TikTok where the people are doing like sip and paint 
type of thing. Maybe you could do right. something like that as mm -hmm. well. And you can actually rate the experience itself and the person who's offering that experience and saying, okay, you know what, this is great. But also you can help with like side hassles and stuff like that. So if, if you don't, you know, if you don't like working in your workspace, you can always start a side hustle with us, guys. We got you. <laughs> That's cool. Right. Um, okay, so I've got two more questions. Um, so in terms of like side hustles, especially since the pandemic, what is your opinion on like creating an extra income on the side whilst you're working full time? and getting skills that are not related to your job at all the opinion well it's definitely definitely if you can if you can do it <laughs> definitely beneficial yeah. um i guess i guess it's just for me uh, for me i think you know it's off to, to be honest with you it's, it's the mindset of the person mm -hmm. you yeah. know and they say the thing called mind of mind of matter mm -hmm. but you believe you can do something you don't if, yeah. you do, if you tell yourself you can't do it, then you can't do it. But one thing you do is believe in yourself, have mm -hmm. that self confidence, and believe that you can do it. Because mm -hmm. the thing is, it's also not, you know, another saying, you know, you got to, you got to try. Otherwise, you know, you're going to fail. But you, you know, you have to, you, you know, it does, it's nothing wrong with failing. You can fail as many times as yeah. you like. You're That's better off trying 10 times and failing 10 times. On the 11th time, you might yeah. have a really successful thing, a really yeah. successful hustle that you started. Mm -hmm. But it's, Unfortunately, I mean, I don't think it's really anybody if you think on even the people that are really successful now that did it, got it right the first time. But the problem yeah, is that yeah. people give up. After the first time, people give up. If not, they give up the second time. But you yeah. have to keep going until you get that that sort of that key market or that sort of um, niche mm -hmm. market market that you want to be in, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Sort of no one else has really put their foot or you know, improve something, improve a service. Mm -hmm. And improve a service that someone else has done and make it better, you know? Yeah. But, you know, it's not going to happen unless you have that self-belief. It's not going to happen unless you have that motivation and that mm -hmm. self-confidence and that sort of, like, undying belief and ambitious nature. It's not going to happen, you know? Yeah. You have to just keep going. You get it, you know? It's like what yeah. Bruce said. He was like, you need to be delusional for you to actually do something or else you're just going to never do anything. Yeah. It exactly. is, it's true. And with the whole side hustle thing, um, again, like Leon said, it's really good if you do it. It's the thing is, um, it's a matter of planning, I think, because obviously yeah. in the real world, the amount of time that I have with work and then outside of work, 80% of our time is spent at work, let's definitely, be honest. Definitely. Right? And so the energy that you have afterwards to do it, if you don't plan, it, it will just seem like you can never get anything done. So I'd say it's fantastic as long as you plan. And as long as you're okay with maybe hours that are that seem like too much, because if you're gonna be doing a side hustle, likelihood is you'll be working after work. Mm. Like you need to figure that out. You know, there's a lot of time that's going into that. But I think it's a great thing. Learning skills outside of your workplace is good. Because if things ever crash in your market, God forbid, then at least you can jump into another one. Well, thank you so much, guys. I know you're really tired. Thank you for making time. Do you have any like last Ooh. words or anything? that you want to share um before we finish um just so any young person that's watching this mm -hmm. if you've got something you like something you're passionate about don't rely on other people's knowledge be curious go out research it look at it find it try and do as much of whatever it is as possible because you'll find that your own work will pay off better than trying to rely on someone else's knowledge I love that. I love that. How are you going to top that, Leo? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. So it's very good. You planned it before. No, I think, just the first I think you had a heads up, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> he was like, drop my um, <laughs> Drop your hat down. <laughs> um, my drop. Um, <laughs> um, okay. I would just say, you know, sort of not give up go from that sort of angles be ambitious mm -hmm. keep striving go forward it doesn't matter if you fail one time second time third time anybody who makes it makes it in life you know nobody ever really in the, the day nobody really asks the person how many times does it take you to get to where you are mm -hmm. they don't care about that they just care about the end result exactly. it yeah. doesn't matter about how many times it doesn't matter about how many times you fall down mm -hmm. as long as you're willing to get yourself back up again yeah. and carry on fighting for what you believe in and to keep fighting mm -hmm. for your 
goal and keep fighting for your objective. And that's the main thing is having the desire and the passion to keep fighting despite all the elements against you. Yeah. You know, and that's what I would say, you gotta keep gotta keep the faith, gotta keep believing in uh, in yourself that you can do it. Well said. Amazing. You came back, you definitely came back. <laughs> I mean, that was quite good as yours. <laughs> I would, I'd like to add one thing. This is more in Leon's experience uh, because of what he does as a job. Yeah. Um, I, I could be wrong, but as far as I've seen, you don't see many people, young people in certain positions. So if you're young and you see a job position that is maybe two, three years, four years ahead of your time, but you've got yeah. the skill, please apply. You might shock yeah. yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true please yeah. apply. Yeah, and thank you on advice as well. But I love that for you. Thank you. I need a reminder too. So yeah, it's good. I love that. Thank you so much, guys. Um, I want to say thank you for just taking time to be on this call with me and sharing what you shared as well.